The year is 1503. The location is central Florence, Italy. A group of men are outside having a debate about the writings of Dante. Dante wrote the Divine Comedy, which has three books, I believe. One is called Paradise, one is called The Inferno, and one is in between them called Purgatory. Now, I'm guessing they were debating, is purgatory legitimate? Is it biblically accurate? Is it something you can find in scriptures, even though the word purgatory is not there? Or is it a concept that Dante just made up? Leonardo da Vinci happens to be walking down the street. One of these men recognizes him and says, Hey, Leonardo, you've done paintings on the Holy Spirit and Christ. We've got a question for you. Can you explain Dante to us? What do you think about him? What do you think about purgatory? By chance, or by fate, or by whatever you want to call it, Michelangelo happens to be walking down the same street. Leonardo da Vinci says, oh, 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 hold on, hold on. First, one of the men recognizes Michelangelo and calls him over to join them. Even though Michelangelo is 20-something years younger than Leonardo, he's already an established sculptor. He'd been working on the David for, I believe, a couple years already. Leonardo says, ah, Michelangelo, he can answer this for you. Michelangelo, what do you think about Dante? What do you think about purgatory? Michelangelo happens to believe this is a trap. And he says, no, you, Leonardo, you answer this. You who wanted to sculpt the horse of bronze but were unable to and had to give up in shame. Now, I don't think it was a trap. I happen to think Leonardo, being 20-something years older, had thought about this, had read the Divine Comedy, had probably read um, the Bible, and had an answer formed in his head, but thought he would give Michelangelo a chance to shine. But Michelangelo being much younger, probably having a much bigger ego, not having been as established yet, took it as, oh, he's trying to trap me with this question. Where can I hit him where it hurts? Leonardo was a much more established painter than Michelangelo at this time. Leonardo was established as an inventor, which Michelangelo is not. Leonardo was established as a cartographer. He drew a beautiful and very accurate map of Amola before satellites were ever a thing. He drew an extremely accurate map of Amola. But in the realm of sculpture, Michelangelo was outshining Leonardo. By the way, make sure you're subscribed for a lot more content that's coming out like this. Make sure to check out the Architects Mixtape and my design process playlist as an architect and stay tuned for a lot more content that's on the way. So the thing with the bronze horse is that was a project that Leonardo was supposed to do for the government of Milan. He had done sketches of it, he had done a small scale version of it and he really wanted to do a large bronze statue of a horse but that project just didn't happen so michelangelo put the salt on the wound with that one by 1504 word of a rivalry might have gotten around because in 1504 each of them was hired to do a large fresco in the same space this was for the town hall of florence the frescoes were never completed however this is a copy of leonardo's fresco by peter paul rubens of the battle of anghiara this is a copy of Michelangelo's fresco by Bastiano da San Gallo of the Battle of Caschina. This is the Hall of 500 where the frescoes were going to be. The council wanted frescoes of battle scenes because they were becoming fashionable in the Renaissance and they'd give them both a chance to show off their anatomy skills. Looking back at it 500 years later, it's easy to call it. Better painter goes to Leonardo. Better sculptor goes to Michelangelo. Better inventor, better cartographer goes to Leonardo. Better architect goes to Michelangelo. Uh, better anatomist is probably the tough one. Both Leonardo and Michelangelo stand out from most other Renaissance artists because they both participated in many dissections of actual cadavers. Leonardo drew and annotated internal organs, bones, and muscles, and it seems like really created the first published 
documentation of human anatomy to that level of detail. His understanding of anatomy was also evident through his paintings, obviously. And Michelangelo, again, the paintings showed a great understanding of anatomy, but so did the sculptures in Michelangelo's case. Also with Michelangelo, we have the creation of Adam in the Sistine Chapel, which looks strikingly similar to a section through a human brain. I gave the painting category to Leonardo because when Leonardo was like 20, he was working for Verrocchio and Verrocchio had a commission to paint the baptism of Jesus. And Verrocchio himself painted most of it. Leonardo painted the angel, which is commonly thought of as being the highlight of the painting. And it's said that Verrocchio himself never picked up a paintbrush again after seeing that angel that his young apprentice painted. And Michelangelo's greatest strength was not painting. When he was starting to do the Sistine Chapel, he was getting the ratios off when he was mixing the paints and they weren't taking to the surface properly. Sculpture goes to Michelangelo. The only surviving sculpture we have of Leonardo is one of Mary and Jesus. And I mean, perhaps it's been damaged over time, but there's really no comparison between that one and La Pieta of Michelangelo. And you put on top of that the 14 foot tall David and the statue of Moses with these insanely smooth surfaces carved out of the marble. We have to understand that Michelangelo was born to be a sculptor. He grew up near a stone quarry and it's said that when he would drink his milk as a kid, there would be marble dust mixed in with the milk. Michelangelo was not an inventor. This category automatically goes to Leonardo who invented many types of weapons and machines. I gave the architecture category to Michelangelo because Leonardo did a fortification structure and a church in Milan that was never built. The design that ended up being constructed was one by architect Orsenigo. And Michelangelo worked with Brunelleschi on the church of San Lorenzo. And Michelangelo spent his final years designing St. Peter's Basilica, along with Bramante. So obviously Michelangelo was Renaissance or High Renaissance, but he happened to live long enough to see the beginning of the transition to the Baroque architecture style and have some of those elements in St. Peter's Basilica. But I mean, it's really hard to talk about the Renaissance without mentioning both of these names. And it's really cool that they had such different strengths. You know, it's possible that when Michelangelo was a kid, he was studying Leonardo and looking for the one area he was not dominating in. He might've noticed that Leonardo was not dominating in sculpture and been like, all right, I'm gonna become the greatest sculptor of the Renaissance. So yeah, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a comment, drop a like. Let me know if this is the type of content you want to see more of. Peace and love and blessings to everyone. I think on this side, I'm going to put my 30-day declutter challenge video. Check that out if you haven't seen it. And I think on this side, I'm going to put one of my old freestyles. You should check that out if you haven't seen it. Subscribe to the channel right here. Hit that bell so you don't miss me in my next video. And I'll see you all very soon. Peace.